cold weather to bring the temperature up higher and more quickly. Um, unfortunately, I'm not real comfortable with it. It is designed to be force all of the fluid to the cooler at 180 degrees. And everyone that I know of that's installed one, the fluid tends to run closer to, 200, uh, to 190 degrees, mm. which is the, the maximum for the fluid is supposed to be 212 before it starts to degrade. Okay. Yeah, 22 degrees to me is just not enough of a comfortable range, especially if you get into mountains, stop and go city traffic, things like that. So I have special ordered one, I have it installed in mine, that is supposed to start switching at 145 and be completely switched at 160. Uh, I installed it before I started my trip out here and driving down the road, it tends to hold around 140 to 143. Um, in some of the uh, mountains that I got into coming out here, going across I-8 towards San Diego, I saw temperatures as high as 160. And stop and go traffic yesterday coming from Huntington Beach over to Yucaipa, I saw 160. Um, someplace, I can't remember where it was, I got into some real heavy stop and go traffic and some pretty steep hills while I was doing it and I actually saw it get to 180 but that's the warmest I've seen. Okay. These are the ideal hose clamps that I use. They're about half inch wide. The ideal number is 5006. If you have a Fastenal store nearby, their number is 62008. And they are, are about twice as wide as the one that comes with the transmission kit. There's a packet of parts that comes with it and I don't use any of those. There's none of the adapters you need or I use the wider hose clamps and everything so I don't use any of them. This is just a matter of getting the hose installed on the Sonax. So if you want to take this or not. <laughs> Good old fashioned lubrication. <laughs> this is the extra, or the original that came with it. It's 2364, so it's very, very snug. opposite sides so that when it's installed down in there they're on the same si side on the inside so they're not sticking out to interfere with everything anything down in there I put the heads up so that at some point later you can go back and check to make sure they're good and snug and try to set it about a quarter inch back from the maximum fitting so that theoretically it's covering of these without being right on one of the edges where it might cut the hose. And as far as how tight, I really don't have an idea. It's uh, <laughs> plenty snug, but you don't want it so tight that you start cutting the rubber with the hose clamp. And these barbs will keep it from slipping once it's once it's tight on there. It'll keep it from slipping off. So it's real tight is not a necessity. Snug. And then this is the way they should go in there. This one will go towards the back of the vehicle. This will go towards the front. They'll actually sit in there kind of like this. And then the hose just winds its way up. We'll try to get a decent shot of how the hose is threaded through all the garbage down in there. Alright, what are we up to now? Okay, we're gonna drop the belly pan down and put a drop cloth inside of it so when we take the original cooler loose any transmission fluid 
or antifreeze we might dribble is not going to dribble directly on the ground. Uh, at my place in the country, it dribbles on the ground, but somebody's driveway or in the city, probably a good idea to catch it. There are two 13 millimeter bolts here in the front that have to be removed. I leave, I get the front one loose and just leave it to kind of hold the weight of it until I'm ready to drop the pan. And then, But in theory, that's where it would be, huh? Yeah, there should be a 10 millimeter here and one here, but it looks like the pan's been uh, slightly bent in somebody's attempt to remove it. I was going to mention that the uh, little 10 millimeter nuts on the back, they just they're, they're, they don't really hold the pan on, they just kind of keep the back from sagging a little bit, and a lot of people don't ever put those back on. It's not a real necessity. So. This, this side's a little more crowded, the horns are in the way here, but other, otherwise it's the same as the other side. There's two bolts here that need to be removed. Before you take the uh, front bolts out of the pan, make sure this little hook is hooked in this little hole. That'll keep it from dropping to the ground when you take the bolts out. And then once the bolts are loose, you lift it just a little bit and you push this towards the back and unlatch it and then the whole front of the pan will come on down on the ground. Just stop up in there. The original shower curtains work really great for this. They're not good for the shower, but they're great for a drop cloth. So you don't even take it out of there, you just leave it there. Yeah. Uh, I try not to loosen the banjo bolts on the cooler until I'm sure everything's here. So you don't have to worry about any leaks or anything if you have to put it back together. This is the uh, ratchet, long extension, swivel joint, and eight millimeter hex. And that's what takes the banjo bolts out. it sometimes. Okay. That's the back banjo bolt. Alright, I can get that. Give me one second. Can you? Uh, I'm going to try and get in there. And the routing of the extension is relatively critical too to get the right angle without binding it up someplace. So I'm looking at the banjo bolt right there. Okay. Straight down in. You got eight millimeter you said? Into that hole, and then you're going to crank it, hex. crank it out, and that's yeah. the one towards the back of the engine. Now, something is the first time I did one of these, first three times. I'm a slow learner. I grabbed it like this to break it loose, yeah. and when I did, when it broke loose, my knuckles hit this sharp edge right here. So like I say, I'm a slow learner. But now you go over to the side. This is only supposed to be torqued 25 foot pounds, according to the manual. But it might be a tad tighter than that. And this one, you can go ahead and take all the way out. This is a banjo bolt. Basically, it's a hollow bolt. It has some holes so the fluid can come up through there, circulate through the whatever. And the other one's the same, and it goes back in through it. This one has red transmission fluid, so it probably has max light, or red line, or amp soil. Banjo bolt, you go in from the other side over here. A little better shot of how you reach it. 